Hello everyone, my name is Spencer Sargent. I'm here with John Wilson. Hi there. Uh, we are here today in the HH Barnum warehouse uh, to talk to you about a banner uh, condition monitoring solutions kit. And uh, specifically, we're here to demonstrate to you how easy it is to set up a vibration monitoring solution in our facility and on your facility. Uh, we thought it was a good place to, to uh, show this setup today. Uh, in our warehouse, our, you know, we ship anywhere from 500 to 1,000 packages a day, and uh, we have motors and bearings all over this conveyor, and uh, uh, if this conveyor goes down, it's going to affect our throughput, right? We're going to have customers mad because they didn't get the products in that they needed to, to keep their plant running or to build machines, et cetera. So um, we thought this would be a good place to, to start. Uh, Condition monitoring, John, what do, what do we mean when we talk about condition monitoring? So condition monitoring is essentially uh, uh, taking moments of time of, of critical devices so you can actually capture an event of perhaps that would lead to a failure. So the whole point of condition monitoring is to basically convert you from reactionary maintenance to predictive maintenance. Pred pred predictive maintenance. So, so we're talking motors and bearings here, right? So we're going to see those in all sorts of applications, conveyors. Um, pumps, um, compressors, uh, you might have it on your heating and cooling systems, right? Maybe on your ventilation, your ventilation systems. Um, and, you know, I don't know about you, but usually when your, your furnace fails or, or your air conditioner fails, it's either in the middle of the summer, right, or your furnace fails right in the middle of winter. And the coldest or the hottest days, you'll see that. Likewise, on a conveyor or even in your general production, you know, you're, you're trying to get as much production out, you're overworking that equipment, that's when it's going to fail. And uh, you can't have that because obviously your production rates and your customers are counting on you like ours. So, so condition monitoring, we're thinking, uh, the thinking behind this is that we can continuously monitor these products, these critical devices, and then as they start to go bad, we can schedule them to be repaired on a weekend or on an off shift uh, so we're not facing downtime created by a, a failed motor or, or bearing. Absolutely, and that's really important for a lot of customers. But a lot of customers, believe it or not, know this uh, condition exists. They know they want to convert to predictive maintenance, but they're kind of uh, stuck by fear. Their fear that condition monitoring solutions are very expensive. Sure. Condition monitoring systems are very difficult, and you're going to involve a lot of layers to implement them. So one of the reasons we wanted to sh show and demonstrate this today is to say, look, it, it's this easy. You can literally buy a solution kit, and you buy the other products associated with it, and in a matter of minutes, you're able to start monitoring those critical uh, components. So this solutions kit here uh, comes from, from Banner, um, comes just like you see it. Uh, you got an HMI um, in an enclosure. What's inside of this uh, enclosure here? So when you get the solution kit, it comes complete. You have your HMI, like you said. That HMI is already pre-programmed to work with our gateway. On this particular case, you can handle up to 40 different motors that we can monitor. All we have inside there is just a controller. That controller we call our wireless gateway from Banner. Um, that unit communicates to either our wired or wireless um, sensors. And then, of course, you see a network switch as well. Uh, this unit uh, requires 24 volts power. Banner sells a nice 24 volt transformer that plugs into the bottom through an M12 connectivity. But it's essentially complete, as you see it. So all the programming, everything's done. We don't need to, to get on, uh, online the, with the HMI and do any programming here. This is done. Yeah, and, and, and no one needs to actually go through a training process to do this either. So it's really this simple. It, on the front page, you have all, all of your motors that you can monitor, and then the settings button. And we'll go into uh, some of those settings as we go through the setup and demonstration. So we have our, our, our solutions kit, our gateway. We obviously need some sensors, right? That's so. Right. Where uh, Banner has a lot of different options for sensors. I mean, this is a uh, vibration and temperature sensor. It comes, uh, you can get it with a little magnet mount if you want. So you can just sla uh, slap this right on the side of a motor. Um, this is a cabled unit to my wireless node. Um, so this node is going to communicate wirelessly back to my gateway. Um, so it, depending on what your application is, you may be able to put this down underneath a motor, you know, in a hard to reach spot. And then you can put this node up, up higher based on your cable length. What other options do you have? So this is an all-in-one uh, vibration sensor and temperature. Uh, essentially, this is the node attached right to the sensor. Uh, like uh, the one that Spencer has, it has a magnet base. You can, uh, for our situation, we're basically just going to snap it on magnetically to our motors, and uh, you know, then we're done. Uh, other versions, like this is 24, are through battery operated as well. 
you also have a wired option. So line you, power version? So yep, if you got 24 line, volts available? Yep, if you have 24 volts, you plug it in through an M12 connector. And um, you, you can also wire these sensors directly into the device too. So if you have an application where, where this is close to your motor, you can actually just hardwire it in there versus uh, doing the communications wirelessly. So yep. a lot and of options. Other mounts for this too might be an adhesive mount. So if you're not comfortable with the magnet being on the motor, uh, you can adhesive it or you can do some um, uh, through fasteners as well. So um, we've got sensors now. We've got our, our gateway. Um, what do we need to do next? Do we, we need to get these talking to our gateway, correct? Prior to doing that, um, let's talk about a couple other sensors we have. Oh, good, so good idea. This happens to be a vibration and monitoring uh, solution kit. Uh, Banner also uh, sells a tank level solution kit and also temperature humidity solution kit. So you have different various applications. Uh, we have those as well. Uh, so different solution kits based on what your need is. Uh, if you, you, know, you want to do tank level, Here's an ultrasonic sensor with your wireless node. Uh, maybe, maybe you run a food plant and you want to monitor temperature and humidity throughout various parts of your food plant. Um, this is going to be a temperature humidity sensor and again, a, a wireless battery powered node. Absolutely. So different, different options. So the first step is obviously you get the solution kit, you, then you buy your respective sensors. Uh, now we have to do what we call a system called binding. So to do the binding, we go to the settings icon um, you can see through the settings page on the HMI screen, we have uh, only a few buttons to press. That's how simple this is to set up. But binding is the uh, process of getting this node talking to that gateway exclusively. Um, so let's try that. So we're going to click the binding button here. Uh, you can see on the screen up it pops uh, to 20 motors here. So we got nodes 1 through 20 and nodes 21 through 40. So right now we're on nodes 1 through 20. Um, we're going to bind this to uh, motor, motor number one. Yep. So, so we're going to turn this on. You turn that on. This unit has uh, uh, is battery operated in our situation. So we have two lithium batteries that last about two years. Um, when, you, when you go ahead and, and push it in, uh, there's basically only one button inside here. Um, our binding process is we call it a triple click. So we basically we press that three times, and the lights will start indicating that we're going through the binding process. You'll see some flickering of lights, but essentially we're done. We can now turn this unit off uh, and get back to the main screen. And uh, this unit will now be talking to this gateway in a matter of minutes. So our next step is to take that uh, sensor and put it on a motor. That's right. Let's go do that. All right, let's go. So we're, we're here at our motor. Um, we're going to go ahead and mount this sensor. This is the... Uh, uh, the, the sensor with the wireless node, everything built in one. So we got our magnet on the, on the base here. We're just going to go ahead and mount that on the top. Sensors are fixed. We're good to go. Awesome. What do you say we go mount um, a cabled unit to another motor? Let's do it. All right, let's go. So we decided we were going to mount a second sensor. Um, this time we're mounting a remote node uh, with a cabled sensor. So if we need to get that node up and out of the way, maybe up higher, um, so we can transmit that signal better. Uh, this gives us an opportunity to do that. Or maybe this is going to be in a, in a harsh environment, maybe down in some in oil or cooling area yep. where, um, where, where we want the electronics of, uh, the, of the node out of that area. So I'm going to go ahead and mount this. One thing I should note here is that there is an X and a Z uh, arrow on the sensor. And you basically want to mount that sensor so the, uh, the X arrow is in line and parallel with your motor, your motor shaft. So I'm going to mount that here. And then, like you were mentioning, this is the re, uh, remote node. Uh, this particular case, it has a 30 millimeter mount, or you actually have some through-hole mounts. There's a lot of ways to mount this unit. Um, we have it mounted to a uh, right angle bracket with a magnet for simplification. So we can basically stick it to the side, and we're all set, and we're done. All right, let's go back and uh, take a look at our gateway. All right. All right, John, we're back. Uh, we mounted our sensor on the motor. Um, Let's see what we have here on our, uh, on our gateway next. So what's next when you have this set up is to do what we call a site survey. Site survey is going to basically tell us uh, that our node, our wireless node, is communicating back to our gateway, and we're getting all that information back there. That's correct? right. Yep. And the information's not right. You would probably do a couple of different things, like either move the controller closer okay. or uh, potentially put an external antenna on here. But... Um, Majority of the time, though, we see that we get pretty good, pretty good distance on this, right? I mean, Absolutely. you know, line of sight for the Banner Wireless products is about two miles. 
um, but obviously we're in a, you know, in a, like in our warehouse here, you got metal and uh, cement around, all lots of things that can affect your signal. So you want to verify you're getting a good signal there. But generally in a factory, we'll see uh, three, 400 yards without any issues. Yeah, I would definitely say you might be able to put this in a maintenance office um, or outside a maintenance office and have your nodes mounted wherever production is happening. Um, but that's what the site survey is going to tell us. So to, in order for that to happen, we go into our settings screen on the HMI again, and we click the site survey button. And from here, you basically select the motors that we want to be talking with. Um, motor 2, for instance, uh, basically it's, it starts running that we have 99 so we're getting plenty of green packets here, no yellow packets, no red packets. One missed, but it I, looks like we're getting all of our data back, right? It is, and, and that's what's important about this screen is you want to see mostly green and yellow. Uh, when you're in the mostly green and yellow, you're probably in a good situation. If you're seeing a majority in the red mist, then, like we said, move this closer, put a different antenna on, or just call us. We can have some advisement for you. We have guys that come out and help you look at that as well. We'd be happy to help you with a site survey, too. I mean, we can do this... Um, we can bring this product in and do it on your, on your floor. Um, but generally, when you're setting it up, it's always good to check to make sure these things are communicating. So once you've done your site survey, you've got this mounted, you've got your nodes talking to it, the next step is to do what we call asset baselining. And what asset baselining is? It's at, basically, we want to know what, what that motor is running like right now, right? We want to we take a, a, a sampling of uh, that motor bearing over a 24-hour period. So right now we're going to take 300 samples mm -hmm. every five minutes, and that's basically going to create an average, right? It's going to show us what the average temperature is, what the average vibration is. It's going to create a baseline for that device, and then we're going to uh, set some parameters around that. That's correct. So. It, it'll auto set some of those parameters for you, but like you said, we're basically taking a snapshot of what is that motor looking like right now uh, in your production. And uh, if that motor is still old, um, it's okay because um, that just means that you're going to start seeing more vibration um, uh, occurrences of, of, of where the, you know, those bearings are out of, of round or you're getting a lot more heat signatures from it. Um, you're going to see those happen a lot more frequently. So it doesn't matter that the motor is not brand new when you do your asset baselining. Gotcha. It's just important to set it up so we have a basically here's where we are today. What does tomorrow look like? So how do we set this up then? So essentially... Uh, we go to the asset baselining button. It's that easy. We select our two motors that we want to start capturing information on. You turn them on, and you're done. After our 24-hour period, it'll create that, uh, that baseline, and, uh, and then we should be monitoring. We should be good to go. Absolutely. Um, you can, can go to your warning and alarm adjustments. So as you get your baselining information and you want to kind of uh, especially if a motor is very old, maybe you want to monitor that motor closer. You can move some of our, our uh, settings and alarms closer to where your baseline is. You have a warning and alarm mode. Um, so you can do that manually if you want, or you just stick with what the parameters automatically set up for you. So in, in the past, you know, temperature vibration monitoring has been around for a while. You, uh, in the past, I know a lot of plants would actually send a person around to take those measurements on a, you know, maybe once a week or... Or, uh, or once a month. I mean, now we're getting, we're getting a sample on that motor every five minutes throughout the day. So we're going to continuously monitor that device, yep. and, and we're going to know when something's going on here. That's right, yeah. Your, your vibration monitoring is not brand new at all. So you, like you say, people are go out and probing it. You're having a guy go do that. That's, that's a manual process. If you had 40 motors, they may be able to do only 10 of them or 20 of them a month. You know, we're able to capture 40 all simultaneously, like those sample rates that you described as well. Um, as you can see on the screen, we have two motors on here that are uh, both functioning. Um, they're both running well. The, the, the color is green. Uh, the ones that are orange here... Um, Nothing's we, talking to them? Yeah, we don't have anything so set up for them. So we get rid of those if we'd want? That's, yep, go ahead and set those up. You can eliminate all those so they're not noise to any operator. Um, but at this point, you are essentially done with your condition monitoring setup. And it just took a matter of minutes. So um, from here, let's say uh, we're having an issue. If we want to dive deeper into this, what can we, what can we look at here on the screen? If we want to dive deep, deeper into, let's say, motor number two here. So motor two, if you open it up, you can see we're getting some information on here. We have some uh, scale that we can adjust to get that uh, uh, larger and larger as, you know, from a, a window picture. Um, but basically, it's given us our temperature. 
Um, it's telling us how much vibration we're getting at our baseline. Um, and it's giving us a color. Most importantly, it's telling us that, hey, green is good. So right and now our motor is running good. It's running within what we, what we taught it as our asset baseline. Uh, yep. Uh, when you go back to the screen, uh, if, uh, basically this is your maintenance office. Maybe the expectation is for some customers is to send a guy to look at the screen every day mm -hmm. and say, are any of our motors yellow? Um, okay. Or any of them red, in fact. Um, and if they are, then you want to do something to it. And that's basically all you, what you get for this basic setup. So if you wanted to send that information somewhere else, let's say maybe somebody up in the, I don't know, maybe up in somebody in the engineering wants to see if there's a problem. What, is there something we could do there? So another way that you could get this information about your statuses to like front offices or any other place uh, in your facility is Banner makes a, a wireless uh, tower light. And uh, the TL70 here is a wireless unit. You bring 24 volts power to the unit uh, by itself. And once you get it connected to this unit, any of the motors that would transition from, say, perhaps green to a yellow would transition your, your tower light from a green to a yellow condition. And uh, what that would do for you is now you can send a guy down to look at the screen. So if you're not always monitoring okay. the screen, this will give you a heads up to now go check the screen, find out which motor is trending to, uh, to a warning mode, and, uh, and then start watching that closer. Maybe you start watching that on a more reoccurring basis, like motor number two is looking like it's trending like there's something going on there. So we can also take that data and send it somewhere else, right? I mean, it's, it's not just stuck here in this, in this device, right? We That's can send right. it some, you know, through uh, over Ethernet or over TCP IP, we can send that somewhere else. Or we could also connect to a PLC That's if right. we wanted to, if we want to set some parameters up. This unit has the, uh, Ethernet IP communication or Profinet communication. So yeah, if you had a PLC that you wanted to basically monitor those conditions, you know, those, those registers, you can basically take that information out. Maybe you want to uh, get a, a CSV file out of it so you can start putting your own Excel spreadsheets together. Track that reporting. data over time so you could maybe you know, monitor and see if it's trending up over a period of time. Absolutely. So this information doesn't have to be uh, only on this controller. You can now send it off to your other SCADA devices. Um, likewise, there's also a uh, cloud service that Banner offers. So if you had this connected to uh, the cloud, uh, you can now actually get all this information from one dashboard that you can easily set up. Uh, I know customers that have multiple uh, facilities that have many of these controllers, one in each facility, for instance. From that same dashboard, you can actually see every facility and whether those motors are running. So now you can, you know, can plan production uh, you know, accordingly. So scalable, we can, you know, if, if, if you just want, if you have a few motors in your facility that are critical, You've got this solution here. You can set everything up relatively quickly. Um, but if you want to go, if, if there's more you need to do, you can scale it, scale it up as you need it. Yeah, you, it's, it's that easy. You start with the controller as a starting point. You start with a sensor, and you're really set. Now you're getting that valuable information uh, to, to convert you from reactionary maintenance to predictive maintenance just in a matter of minutes. And there's really no reason to delay. Uh, you can have this information now. You don't have to get a lot of people involved. And we're here to help you at HH Barnum. We're here to help you set it up. We have application engineers. We've got sales guys that can help you through this whole setup. But it doesn't ha you don't have to have a fear that this is going to be too complicated. And that's kind of why we were showing this to you today. So if, if you have uh, critical motors, bearings in your plant and your, in your facilities that you'd like to monitor, um, please call us at HH Barnum. And uh, we'll bring out a solutions kit. Uh, we can do a site survey at your facility, and uh, you can be monitoring those, those, uh, those critical motors in the future. Anything else, John? That's it. Thanks for watching, and for sure, if you have any questions, we're here to help you. Thanks again.